Hi guys, welcome to Web Design Tuts. My name is Ian, and today we're going to look at building ourselves this nice responsive web page. It's going to be based on the skeleton boilerplate, and it's very straightforward. And uh, this is the design. This is what you're looking at. It's based on a tutorial that we featured recently, actually, uh, by a guy called Mardi, who walked us through the whole Photoshop process of putting together all these bits and bobs, laying things out, and coming up with all these little aesthetic. Uh, details uh, as you can see here. That was supposed to be it. It was only ever going to be a Photoshop tutorial. We were going to leave it there but uh, a few people asked in the comments plus I realized actually once it was finished that it would be the perfect example to demonstrate a few responsive web design bits and pieces, some techniques and some tricks uh, and so that's what we're going to do. So you'll notice it contains all kinds of elements. There's a menu for example and there's this slideshow at the top. We've got uh, we've got tabs, we've got uh, some video which of course needs to be flexible, various feeds from Twitter and Flickr, and the whole lot is, oh, excuse me, perfectly, if I can actually change the size of my browser, uh, perfectly fluid. You'll see it changing as we make the viewport smaller and larger. Uh, here it of course switches down to uh, mobile size and you'll see that the menu is switched out for this uh, convenient drop down menu for example. Everything else slips into place nicely uh, and it's actually a very neat and fresh theme. So during this first video what we're going to do is go and grab the skeleton boilerplate uh, which is going to be the base of our project and then we're going to check out the PSD and work out which bits and pieces we're going to need to make into uh, graphics uh, and what we can handle with CSS. So, first things first, let's head over to getskeleton.com. This is where you can read up all about the skeleton framework. Uh, it's very simple. It's, uh, it's a little more complicated, complex than a, um, than a grid system uh, because it does involve some basic styling for your, your basic elements, uh, such as buttons and tabs, form styling, etc. But it's nowhere near as involved as something like Twitter's Bootstrap, which uh, has some quite advanced styling involved. The important thing about Skeleton is that it, it's based on some fairly neat media queries. It's not a fluid uh, layout, it's more uh, a series of fixed layouts. It takes uh, media queries with uh, minimum and maximum width values and within those four sort of uh, ranges it determines uh, four set uh, grid layouts as you can see here. So it actually makes it very easy to design with because uh, you're not designing for an entirely fluid layout. You're not designing with a million different breakpoints uh, and things flowing all over the place. Uh, it's, it's actually a really nice way to get started with responsive web design. So having said that, let's go to the download link and we'll grab the source files from GitHub straight away. Here they come. One second when it decides to work. There we go. And I'm going to open that up in Finder and decompress it like so. And I'll just stick those on my desktop. That's what we're going to use as our project. What is going on with my mouse? There we go. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And I'm just going to rename this directory like so. As you can see, if I open it up, there's really very little to it. We've got a couple of HTML files. We've got very familiar looking directories. There's no um, no documentation or anything to get in the way. This is exactly what you need and nothing else. Um, the images, for example, uh, there are a couple provided. These cater for Apple Touch devices, some icons, for example, and a fav icon. Uh, and these are currently uh, based on the skeleton uh, logo. So what we're going to first do is open up our PSD and we're going to create ourselves some icons to swap out for these ones here. So open up Photoshop and grab the PSD from the previous tutorial. I'll provide the link here underneath this screencast. Um, these are all the elements uh, that we're going to be dealing with. It's not 100% true to what I've built of course but uh, you know we're, we're dealing with flexible web design here. We're, we're, we're concentrating on the basic aesthetics and uh, 
being kind of flexible in, in how we interpret that. So the first thing we're going to do is kick off with a 114 square and I'm just going to grab this logo here with its background and this is going to form the basis of our first icon. I'm just going to delete everything but the M and the full stop, excuse me, like so. Make that a little larger. And that's going to be our first icon, so I'm just going to save that as a PNG file out to my desktop in the magazine. Uh, that's the first one. Okay. Uh, there was also one for 72 pixels, so I can do that in here as I save it, like so. As we get smaller, of course, the details start to get a little bit lost, so you want to be careful while you're actually doing this. And they're looking fine there for the time being, but the fav icon, for example, uh, if I shrink that down to 20 pixels square, uh, you'll see that when we zoom in, I've actually lost quite a bit of pixel detail. There. So, what I'm now going to do is first, I'm going to sample the color of this red because I'm going to need that. I'll copy that. And I'm going to, on the layer, I'm going to get the type and I'm going to convert that to a shape. Uh, now, using the direct selection tool, I can just um, nudge various lines left and right in order to just clean up. With these forms like so. Okay, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but you'll get the idea. Uh, and of course, that needs to change as well. Send that upwards, nice big square, because we're dealing with a very small icon here, of course, like so. And I'm just going to copy that and delete the M, leaving me with that full stop. And in this case, delete the full stop. Okay, now, the full stop was that red color. Now when I zoom out, you see you've got a much crisper, uh, a much crisper image. So that's our last icon. Let's just quickly save that. That was our fab icon, like so. Okay, and now we'll just ditch this. Uh, Ditch this PSD. So, uh, having done that, what we now need to decide is what we're going to need in terms of graphics and what we're going to be able to handle using CSS. Uh, obviously, the logo needs to be completely unchanged in whatever state it's in, so we can't have that uh, generated by any CSS and HTML. That needs to remain exactly as it is. So, what we'll do is we'll kick off by starting a sprite sheet and I'm going to just show the grid on there which I have set as 50 pixel squares you can set that in your preferences under the guides and the grids and you can see I've set the grid line there to 50 pixels and that's just going to allow us to see clearly uh, where exactly everything is positioned on our sprite sheet which are extremely useful for later on when we're in the CSS uh, and we're trying to work out how to reference everything. So I need that logo and I need this smaller version down here again. Like so. Pop that there. Okay. Uh, that's actually it as far as I know. We've got a number of backgrounds, uh, a number of uh, little effects like, well actually these stitches here, these can be handled with CSS without any problem. Those are just two dashed strokes by the look of it. The, there are some slightly more complex stitches with a darker area above. We can maybe use that in a um, as a background image. These diagonal lines here, these can going to need to be in a diagonal in the uh, graphic image as well. And of course, all this noisy background in its various states of light and dark that all needs to be taken care of uh, in graphics. But we can't actually handle that in our sprite sheet because we're going to need to repeat in too many different directions. So I'm just going to trim this up because we don't need it anywhere near this big. So we'll make that 300 by 150 
like so. And I'm just going to save this in our images directory as sprite. And I'm also going to command s this because I want to save this as a PSD as well. It's a, you should always save your your sprite images so that you can add to it, edit it later without any problems. So uh, that's that done. Now we're going to need to uh, work on bits like this background here, for example. So let's begin by just making ourselves some tiles. Uh, let's make a square here of 150 by 150. And we can do things like just grabbing this, for example. That's large enough to repeat the pattern. It could be smaller, probably. But just to make sure we keep the chaos element in the noise, we'll keep it at 150. That's fine. And we're going to save that. Uh, once again in our images, uh, calling it something appropriate that we're going to remember. And uh, now we can do this for all the various uh, backgrounds. We've got three different, essentially three different colors here. This dark one here, again, we'll just flip that over there, save that out. Call that something else, like that. Um, and of course we've got various bits and bobs like these diagonals strokes here. Now these are all going to need to be saved as repeatable patterns. Uh, you need to make sure that they actually repeat properly across both axes so that uh, no matter how wide we make this in our web design, because we're thinking flexibly here, uh, that it all neatly tiles and tessellates. Uh, now this particular pattern I've already made across once and I happen to know that it's uh, 6 pixels by 6 pixels and it looks something like that. So you're going to be aiming for something along those lines, making sure that it repeats in all kinds of directions. Now, I'm not going to bore you by forcing you to sit and watch this whole process. Uh, we've kind of covered what we needed to do for the time being. We've got... Um, I'm going to uh, add to the source files the, uh, the rest of the little images we need here. We've got our backgrounds, we have our sprite, and uh, we have our icons. Uh, so now, uh, if you want to just finish up the rest of the images on this, uh, and then I'll see you in the next video.